Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Zotec ZT5566SE desktop multimeter with Bluetooth. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So when I first came upon this, I thought this looks like a really interesting product. You have a multimeter, Bluetooth speaker, and an alarm clock all in one. So let's look at the features here. It has AC-DC voltage, AC-DC millivolt, AC-DC current, AC-DC milliamps, capacitance, buzzer, that's continuity. You have resistance, music, frequency, diode, alarm clock, time, indoor thermometer, Bluetooth, has four and a half. That is your counts here. So the first digit will be one or zero, and then you have four digits after. So this will go up to one, nine, 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 nine. We have min, max function, hold, and true RMS. So let's get this open. This almost looks like a car stereo. Yeah, it's probably a little smaller than a car stereo. So we have some probes here. This is a USB cord. I haven't seen this in a while. It's actually mini USB. And aside from being a Bluetooth speaker, this is also a Bluetooth app enabled. So here are the instructions for that. And here we have the user manual. We'll take a quick look at it. So here are the contents. This says voice broadcast. I'm interested to see what that is. I think that might actually speak the voltage. There's some warnings here. Here's the display. It's what the symbols mean. And you can pause on any of these if you want to read them longer. And here's more display stuff. These are the function buttons. There's more. It says there's a button on the test lead. Put the test lead into the comm terminal. Press the button once and it will broadcast current function and reading. We have rotary switch. When using the multimeter, press the vol range button to go to the range mode and rotate to select the corresponding range. When using Bluetooth audio, press the vol range button to go to vol mode and rotate to control the playback volume. When the alarm is ringing, rotate to turn off the alarm. When the multimeter is in standby, the audio playback volume can be controlled by the rotary switch. When charging or not placing the battery to play music, rotate to control the volume zero to 15 grades. When the battery is full or not charging, rotate the control volume of zero to 30 grades. Okay, then we have the connectors here the input terminals and these are standard to what most multimeters will have and we have the measure ac dc voltage measure current resistance continuity diodes capacitance frequency duty cycle your clock setting alarm clock setting and here's that voice broadcast this is auto standby so after 15 minutes it will go into standby and this has a lithium battery in it looks like this talks about replacing the fuse and here are the specs so you can read through those here are more specs you can pause and look at those if those are of interest to you Here's the Bluetooth speaker specs. Power is two by four watts. This talks about the app and I'll go over that. So let's look at the multimeter. We have some plastic over the display. I'll peel that off. So this has this kind of rubberized coating on the front. And it's hard plastic on the back. We have rubberized buttons here. We have the inputs. This is a knob. There's probably plastic on this too. Yes, yeah, let's peel that off. On the side, we have this fabric mesh for the speakers. We go on the back, we have buttons here for power mode. It's up, down, Celsius, Fahrenheit. This looks like the charging. So this charges with five volts, two amps. So you just charge this with a USB like phone charger. And here's a little opening here. Let me check that out. Let me open that up. Okay, and it's what I suspected. So this has two 18650 cells in it. So those are standard lithium cells. So if these were to go bad someday, you can replace them. So that's really nice. Now the screw in here is not captive. It actually fell. Somehow or another, I found it <laughs> right away. But you shouldn't have to open that very often, if ever. Let's go to the bottom real quick. We have rubber feet here, and then we have these feet that pop up. I'm not having luck with that. Let me get a little pry tool. I don't have any fingernails. So that will raise the angle of this a little bit, like so. So let's see how I can demonstrate this. Let me turn the power on. Okay. So it looks like we have a little battery indicator here, and it looks like it's fully charged up. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad here. I'm going to go into my Bluetooth settings and I'll see this DMM music. This is the first time in my life I've ever connected to a multimeter for playing music. So now I'll go into my music app and I have some royalty free music I'll play here. Okay, I had trouble getting that to work because I was recording the screen of my iPad and it apparently could not play the music on the Bluetooth speaker while I'm recording the screen. So I stopped the recording so I could demonstrate this. So I'll just play the music on my iPad. So I can turn this knob to adjust the volume.
So that was super easy to set up once I figured out that I couldn't record my screen at the same time. So before I test features on here, I'll actually get it set up in the app so we can watch it in both places. So you go to your app store and you'll search for Bluetooth DMM, that's digital multimeter. I'll hit search. Now I already have this installed, but otherwise you would hit get and download it. So I'll just open it. Okay, so I have the app up. I'll tap on one of the Bluetooth symbols. It says Bluetooth DMM. I'll tap that. It says connected. Then I'll go back and I'll tap on the multimeter and now we have the screen up. So what we see on the unit itself will now show up on my iPad. So let's get out the probes and the probes are just over four feet long. So I'll pull the cap off here and here we have the common and this is the positive. So these have protectors on them and we could pull these off if we want to have a little bit longer probe. So I'll plug these in. The black I will plug into the com here and these come straight out the unit. Do a little bit of light here. And then the other one will go over here to the left of it. So now we're set up ready to go. Let's do continuity. So we'll press that. We'll hold these together. I'm going to pull these tips off. You know. The continuity. So we're seeing that on the app and the meter. So I'm kind of running out of room here. Let me put this to the side. And let me bring up my test center here. So this is my project lab I had as a kid. Has lots of components on it. But let's uh, go to resistance here. So we'll hit ohms. And then we have some resistors. I'll just hold down on here. And here we have 5.7 kilo ohms. And it's 5.6 on the kit. So that's correct within tolerance. And you'll notice when I touch those probes on there, The app also showed the results. So I'll try some different ones here. Here's 120. Let me get a better connection here. I don't really like these spring terminals. I'm just going to go right on the resistor. So we've got 120. This should be around 680. That's showing kilo ohms. So we can change the range here. So I'll press the ball range button. And you can see that's changing here, and I'll turn this. So we can also test uh, capacitors. Let's hit that one here. So capacitor here. So this is 0 0.002 microfarad. So it's showing as two nanofarad, okay. We have diode. So diode is going to be here. So I'll put my leads on that. I was on continuity, I'll switch to diode. I'll hold those on there. So we have nothing that direction. We'll do it the other direction. And we have voltage. Now on the app, we can double tap on the meter and make that bigger. So let me switch over to, let's go to volts AC. So I'll just tap on the button multiple times to go between the different modes. So here's AC. Get my power over here and I'll plug the leads into it. So here we're seeing 120 volts, and in the app we can see that large. And then we can also make that chart large. Now you could also see the hertz there. So we could see the frequency down there also. And we can hit hold here, take our probes out, and it's going to hold that. So that's pretty cool, but this thing has even more than that. Let's go back to ohms, and let's say we're looking at a resistor here. This is a 100K resistor. Okay. And say where this is at, I can't see the meter. 100, 0, 1.96 kilo ohm. So that's really cool. So what this has on the COM probe has a button. And when you press it, it will read the screen. So say you're in your car under the dash, reading a value of something or doing some voltage. You can have your probes under there. Focus on what you're doing. Hit that button and it'll read it to you. That's worth the price of admission on this alone. Let me do that again. 9.912 kilo ohm. Let's do another one. Let's do some DC here. I'll just measure a battery. Let me measure it like this. 
DC voltage 1.5267 volt. Okay, that was interesting. It rounded up, which was fine. I didn't need all those decimals, but let's try it backwards. DC voltage negative 1.5265 volt. So that's very clear and very easy to understand. I like that. So here I have an adjustable resistor. This is not a traditional potentiometer. It's just a little coil with an alligator clip. You drag it along. So let's let's go back to ohms here. Let's see what this does. So I'll... 10, 2.68 ohm. 10, 1.61 ohm. So now if you hold that button down, it will not say it again. So you do need to press it for each value, which is fine. I was just curious if that would repeat. So that's very cool. So this does also have range down here. So we can press volume range. Let's go to, let's go to voltage here. And we can turn this knob and we can move the decimal here. And we're back at auto. So I usually do auto ranging. I'm usually happy with that. Then we have like min, max, hold, and relative. Now this also has a built-in thermometer here. Now it's on Celsius by default. I can hit a button in the back and we can change that to Fahrenheit. So it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And then in the back we have, I think it was four buttons here. We have mode, up, down. So I can hit mode here and we can change the time. Now, if you hold down that mode button, you can set the alarm clock. So this charges with that micro USB cable. So pull that out here. That will plug in the back. I said micro, this is actually mini. I'll plug that into my charger over here. Let's see what we're drawing. Okay, so it's currently drawing 0.65 amps. So another thing I didn't point out is our feet on here. So if you're not charging this, you can put this straight down. So if you're working on some equipment, you can put this down. Let me just unplug this to show that. But there is clearance, so you can have this down while you're using it. But the standard configuration for this would be like on a bench, like so. So it's very easy to read this screen from the top and sides. If I tilt this up, it gets to an angle where it's hard to read. So if you had this up, say above your head, just above your head, it's pretty easy to read. But if you put it up really high, like on a high up shelf, um, it could be hard to read. But the visibility is very good from the side. Very good from the top, and you'll even see when I tilt this here, we get at an angle where it's hard to read. Now that's from the perspective of my camera lens. I can read this right now, but otherwise I really like the visibility of that screen. Super easy to read. So that's the Zotac ZT5566 ST desktop Bluetooth multimeter with Bluetooth speaker. This has a lot of really nice useful features in it. The screen's really easy to see. I like that. It has a Bluetooth speaker. It sounded pretty good until you got into very heavy bass, but otherwise it sounded good for regular music and talk. So that's a nice feature. But the two really cool standout features I think on this are the app connectivity and the ability to speak the values. So when you hook it into the app, you can track things over time. You could actually even connect four of these up into the app so you could track four things at a time. There's really lots of cool features in that app. But when you're using this on your own, the ability to press this button and have it talk to you is really nice. So the typical way you do something would be to hold the probes on there and hit the hold to hold the value. And then you can come back and look at your meter. But having that button, it will talk to you. That's going to be a game changer for certain projects. This also has that clock on there. And of course, we all have clocks on our phones and other devices. But I have to say, oftentimes I go around the room and I look for a clock. You know, the microwave in our house is still kind of a clock we often look at. We still have a clock on our bed stand. So I always appreciate having a clock around that I can just glance up and look at. So I just wanted to shoot a quick clip here after the meter turns off. I think it's after 15 minutes. Then the time goes to the main display and the temperature goes to the dial display. And of course this has those rechargeable batteries in it. And I think the Amazon page said it will last around 24 hours on a charge. So that's really handy. And I really like that it's 18650 cells. So if they were to go bad someday you can replace them. Or maybe you're using this on the road. You can have an extra set. So if you need to swap them out between charges, you can do that. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.